In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a Jakarta E application that uses Vadin to a MySQL database using Apache Delta Spike Data. And so the first thing you need to do is to install MySQL and start the server. So with that, we can now connect to the server using the user root, for example. You might want to create uh, a user for the application, for the web application. I'm just going to use uh, the root uh, user just for demo purposes. And let's create a database, Jakarta EE. And let's create also a table that's called users with uh, probably when an ID int not null auto increment so we don't need to pass the values to to that column uh, what else uh, let's read an email or char 255 should be all right let's create maybe a birth date to have one more that's gonna be a date and the um, primary key is gonna be in the ID I guess that looks all right. Let's see if it works. Yep. And let's insert into users email birth date. At least one one user with let's say 2001 or two or whatever. Select from users yeah so we have we have something to play with all right so database is ready and now let's configure the project so I created this project in a previous video you can watch it I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this one and uh, the important bits are that I'm using Java 11 Vadin 20 I only uh, updated this to the most recent version of Vadin uh, compared to the previous uh, video and the other important part is that we are using Jakarta E 8.0 and we have the Tommy Maven plugin that uh, maybe I want to update also this one here to uh, I believe this should work and in fact I think we don't need almost anything here just to keep it very very simple I think this should work let's remove this as well let's reload the maven configuration and I want to use Apache Delta spike so there are many modules in this project and the one we want to use is called data and so here you find instructions on how to uh, set up the project so first you need to follow this this part which requires to add this um, bill of materials here maybe we can put it after Vadin and the version I'm just gonna put the version right here not gonna use a variable for now uh, you can also use the the property if you want um, and and we need to also include this tip in the uh, dependencies section so I'm gonna put it right there after Jakarta EE so that is uh, Apache uh, Delta Spike, the core of it. But we're going to use one of the modules. So I'm going to get back to data module. And we need to add these two dependencies as well. So let me just remove all this extra space. We don't need the version because we're using the bill of materials. And we can now uh, reload this thing. OK, so we have, we have the dependencies and this should be all right in a moment let's see yeah so it's working very good so we have the project uh at least on the dependencies part ready so we need to define a connection to the database the, the mysql database right so because we're using jakarta you need to deploy this application to a server 
and we're using Tommy. Now, the way we're using it here is as a Maven plugin that, that's like you have it here or you, you can you can run the server through Maven. You can also install that separately in your hard drive and then configure it there. Uh, but during development, this is pretty useful. Maybe you are familiar also also with uh, Jetty, uh, so it's uh, it's kind of similar, right? Same concept. Uh, so the resources in a server should be should be uh, configured there in the server, right? And a database connection is a, a resource. It's a it's something that that the uh, server should know, so that the server knows how to connect to the database. So we are going to define that connection in the configuration of the server. So that's server specific. If you are using something else, not, not Tommy, but something else, you'll have to do it a bit differently. Uh, but I'm going to use that. Uh, so if you go to the uh, Apache Tommy uh, website and documentation, you'll find everything there. Uh, what we need, I'm going to show you maybe uh, this section, data source configuration. So there are some some instructions on on how to how to uh, create that uh, uh, data source, right? That, that how to define the, the connection to the MySQL instance. And so for that, we need to create a new directory here called Tommy. Inside that. We need something called conf and then a new file with this name tommy.xml and and so this is basically uh the configuration of the server and here we can put uh, all these all these things so you can for example just we can copy this actually i think there's a better one here maybe let me see yeah this one uh, so here you have all the the different databases like oracle uh, MySQL, which is the one that we want, PostgreSQL, and, and, and some others. So I'm going to use that. And let's just uh, remove all of this. And um, we need to specify the name of the database here. I think I, I used, what was it? I don't remember. Uh, Jakarta E. Jakarta EU. Username. Like I said, you probably don't want to use root, but it's okay for this demo. Password. The password is password. And so we have the the resource. We're gonna give this a better name. So MySQL resource, so that we understand the concepts. So we have this resource is a connection to a MySQL database. Okay, so now we can refer from a Jakarta e application to this uh, connection using that name, MySQL resource, and we're going to see uh, that in a moment. So the server knows that this exists, but the application doesn't. How can we connect these two? So we're going to use JPA, and with JPA, you need to define a persistence.xml file that I think maybe there is a uh, an example somewhere here. Let me see. There we go. We can use this. Let's copy this. And this should go in the um, resources directory and meta inf. Here we create a new file called persistence.xml. And so we have this example right here. Um, let's tweak this a little bit. So let's call this the Carta EE persistence unit. So this is called a persistence unit. And we're going to use resource local. It's uh, something that it's in the server. So we don't need this. And here we can use the name we defined in the server, right? This is a Tommy configuration. I'm going to use this value right there. Like that. Okay, so we have the persistence unit. So now the application knows that the server has a connection resource 
and whether whether it is MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, it doesn't matter. And here we define the classes that are going to be persisted. So let me we, we're going to create a new one. So let me see what's the the package that we use there. So com dot example dot app dot user, and let's create this class right away. This is going to be an entity. So this is JPA Jakarta persistence. Uh, the table name name was users let me double check that users yeah and we have a integer ID we have a string with the email and we have a local date birth date all right let's configure now the columns so first of all this was the ID and it's gonna be a generated value and the strategy for this is uh, identity because we're using uh, our increment let's configure also the name of the column although it matches the name so it's not really necessary but uh, let's be explicit here same with email it's not really necessary but uh, I consider this uh, a better practice birth birth date all right so we have the the Java fields that match each column now something you have to do here to, in order to this to for this to, to work properly it's to create a equ an equals and an hash code and uh, what I'm gonna use is ID so that if two instances of this class have the same ID they are considered the same right and also getters and setters for everybody very good so we have the entity ready let me close all these um, yeah all right so I've something I forgot is that we're using MySQL so we need the JDBC driver and if you think about it that's that should go to the server so one way of doing this is creating here in the, in the configuration section adding the lib for that and actually let me check how's the how's that done uh, probably we have the Tommy uh, maybe plugin let's see one of these just to see if we have an example there we go so so I, that's actually uh, my SQL so we can use that maybe let me use the latest version that was this instead of that and, um, and now the server can connect to MySQL let's also reload the Maven project okay so I think we are getting we're getting there so we have configured the project the also the database connection and we have our persistence.xml file that defines a persistence unit now we can create for example a repository it's actually an interface that we're going to create here so user repository and we're going to use apache delta spike data repository so look this is the 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 package and we need to extend entity repository it's of type user and the uh, ID of the user it's of type integer and with that look at what we have now automatically we have count we have find all we have um, some more query methods here get primary key uh, remove save etc and you can define your own methods there kind of declaratively depending on the name of the method then Apache Delta spike data is gonna create the query at runtime for you you don't have to implement that mm, but I'll let that as an as an um, exercise for you it's very well documented in the in the website of the project okay so we have the user repository that we can inject in a view and so here we have right now like a greeting service but we don't need that anymore 
In fact, we don't need any of these stuff. We don't even need the greed service class. We can remove it safely. But we want to inject. We're injecting this with uh, CDI, uh, the user repository. And now we can use it. So user repository dot count. And we can uh, assign this to a new variable count notification that show users and then count so this should show one right now uh, something I forgot to do because we're using this repository class with Apache Delta spike data and we're using JPA we need to connect JPA kind of kind of uh, connect JPA with uh, Apache Delta spike data and the way to do that is through an entity manager and uh, kind of uh, Apache Delta Spike doesn't know how to create that. We need to we need to provide that that uh, that instance. Uh, but that's pretty easy, and it's also very well documented. All we have to do is to copy this class here, which is a uh, CDI producer, uh, kind of a factory class. Let me copy that here. So. Mm, this is this is a class that's gonna create new entity managers. An entity manager is a kind of the entry point, if you wish, of uh, of uh, JPA. So so once you have the entity manager, you can start uh, running queries and and performing operations on the database. So Apache Delta Spike needs one of those, and with this class, we are providing one so apache delta spike is going to automatically use uh, the entity manager this method returns and since we are injecting here a persistence unit which is uh, or uh, rather an entity manager factory uh, uh, it's associated to a persistence unit so maybe we can uh, set the name and the name is here to avoid any typos i'm gonna copy from there and so now you maybe can see right how it is everything it's connected so this creates the entity manager now Apache Delta spike data can use it to query mm, the database so I guess this should do the trick um, let's test this by running the package Go and Tommy run with Maven. All right, so it seems to be ready. Let's go here and refresh. It actually refreshed already. User is one, so yes, it's uh, it's working. So um, there you go. That's how you connect to a MySQL database using JPA Apache Delta Spike from a Jakarta E application with Vadin. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.